So I'm feeling a little sadness right now and I'm bringing in some of my self-compassion tools to take care of myself. And so the first thing I do is I recognize that I'm having a tough time right now. I actually stop armoring up against my emotions. I stop trying to distract myself. I stop, I stop avoiding my emotions. I allow myself to soften a little. I even find myself saying to myself, oh, sweetheart, you're having a hard time right now. And so in recognition of that, I uh, tap into one of the aspects of the affiliative system, the mammalian caregiving system, and I jump in a hot shower. The warmth, the feeling of the shower on my skin is very soothing. And then um, I have some carbohydrates. Carbohydrates help to release dopamine into our system. Dopamine makes us feel good. So I have some, some toast. And now I'm going to sit with um, a self-compassion practice. I'm going to tend intentionally to my sadness. And so firstly, I, um, I tune into my body. What is it that I'm feeling? Can I name what I'm feeling? I'm feeling sort of a, a lethargy, a malaise, low energy. Nothing seems very interesting to me. Some sadness, a little anxiety, and some confusion as well. There's a childlike, childlike confusion. So then I find where in my body I'm feeling tension and I can feel it behind my solar plexus. There's a tightness, a tension there. Sort of radiating out a little bit into my diaphragm, just a little, not very far. There's a little tension in my shoulders as well. My face feels tight as well. My cheeks and my forehead feel tight. There's a slight constriction in my throat. The most, the, the strongest feeling I have is behind my solar plexus, that tightness there in that place in my body. So I don't particularly like this sensation. So the first thing I want to do is to allow it to be there. to release any resistance to it, any desire to push away this feeling. Any sense of noticing but then glancing off. I notice but I'm going to go somewhere else. Instead of that, choosing to be with this sensation in my solar plexus. Allowing it to be there, allowing myself to be with it. And 
And just through that, I feel it change. I feel it release a little. You're allowed to be there. And there's a sense that it feels some gratitude that it's allowed to be there. Some relief. It's not being rejected. As I feel into that, I, feel, I can feel some tears starting to come to my eyes, this relief and being allowed to be there. There's a little backdraft happening. You're allowed to be there. The backdraft is the contrast between not being allowed to be there and finally being allowed to be there. The contrast is really touching. I'm going to ask it what it needs right now. I was searching in my mind for what does my own self-wisdom tell me I need to do right now? And it tells me I need to ask it what's going on. It's saying I'm very tired. I've been doing this for a long time. This tension, this anxiety, this being alert. I'm tired of this. I can feel more tears starting to come to my eyes. The, the sadness, the recognition of how it is to have been holding anxiety in some form for so long. For this part of me to be so tired. You can sort of even see it laying down. It just wants to rest. It just wants to lay on the ground and rest. And so once again, my self-wisdom is coming in. I have, I have specific practices in my head, in mind, but my self-wisdom is saying, no, this is what needs to happen next. It's not my mind telling me what to do next. My body is telling me what to do next. And in my mind, I'm seeing myself in relationship with this anxiety. This anxiety is personified. And I see this anxiety laying on the ground, resting, and me putting a, a fluffy blanket over it, tending to it. And staying with it, sitting beside it. You're allowed to rest. I feel more tears come as I'm giving that permission. You're allowed to rest. And it's saying I want to sleep for a hundred years. 
I'm saying you can do that. And then my self-wisdom says, I want to ask it, is there anything more it needs right now? So I ask, do you need something more right now? And what comes to mind are images of this part of me as a young girl. The images of her running outside and playing, outside in the field, in the sunshine. There are butterflies. There's a lot of freedom, feeling of freedom. This part of me is saying, this is what I want to do at some point. Once I've rested, I want to go out and play. I feel a sense of joy, of freedom. Once again, I feel more tears, but these are like sort of happy relief tears. These are, yes. Yes, I want you to be able to do that. I start to have another thought about, no, they can't do that. They have to stay on guard. And, but I'm able to let that thought go and just stay with me being with this anxious part as they rest. I can hold this space right now. I can bring my, my wise woman archetype, my fierce compassion for this little anxious one. I can draw on my, my inner strength, my sense of common decency in relation to this little one. Of course I would want them to rest. Of course I would want to keep them warm. Of course I would want to support them in going out and having fun in the sunshine. Of course. And any other part of me that wants to have something to say right now, I care for them as well and I will tend to them later. Right now, it's this little part that I'm tending to. They need to know that they are really special, that they're getting all of my attention right now. So I return to my body and I'm still feeling that tightness behind my solar plexus. And there's a part of me that says, but that should be gone. You've just done the work. And so once again, my self-wisdom comes in and I intuitively just rub that part of my body, just offer some physical touch, some soothing. It's all right. I told you you're allowed to be there. Remind myself of that. You're allowed to be there. And that helps me release some more. Really drawing on that inner wisdom, that inner maturity, that strength, that wise woman archetype. Practice is not about getting rid of my parts, avoiding my emotions. It's about being with them. And so I feel as if there's a sense of dignity in being with this anxiety. You can be there and I will be here with dignity, upright, protective. So I check into my internal landscape. Is there anything more? that I need to do right now. And there is still that part of me saying, shouldn't this anxiety be gotten rid of? So once again, I call on my wise woman. 
a reminder to stand up, to advocate for this part. They are allowed to be there. There is no expectation that they leave, that they become something different. They are allowed to be there. All that work in resisting an emotion creates extra suffering. I have a sense that somewhere down the track, as I continue to allow this emotion to be there, that wisdom will grow. Things will change. It will become easier and easier and it will make more and more sense to simply be with this difficulty. And I'll support my growth in other ways in giving myself tools so that I can be with more and more often, more and more easily, more and more readily to the point where it becomes a natural impulse to tend to a difficult emotion rather than armour up or resist it. This, this is the fruit of practice. And so part of the reason I record my journey sometimes is I want for my suffering to have meaning beyond just my own personal journey. I want my experiences to give hope and strength to you who are watching. I want you to get a sense that you can tool yourself up, you can skill yourself up, you can learn to be with anything that arises in your experience. There is hope. We need to do the work, but there is hope. And we're worth it, every one of us.